Hi there, my name is Martin Stone from Switch On Health. And in today's short session, we are going to have a look at viruses. And in particular, we're going to talk about something we hear a lot about in media these days, which is variants, these new variants of these viruses or one particular virus, a coronavirus in particular. Um, obviously, a lot of people are concerned about these new viruses or these new variants, I should say. Um, you know, they appear to be more dangerous and so on. So what we're going to look at is uh, mutations, variants, strains, you know, what are all these things? Uh, what's the difference between them? Um, just as a quick summary of today's uh, topic, um, what is a mutation or a mutated virus? Uh, we'll have a look at what is a variant? What is a new strain of a virus? How are all of these different to each other? And how or why are new variants or strains more deadly than the original virus? And then at the end of this session, we'll also have a bit of a look at vaccines and the role that they play in viruses and variants. So to start off with, what is a mutation? So a mutation is an alteration in replicated nucleic acid. So to explain this a bit more simply, um, you probably know that your cells contain DNA, which is the type of nucleic acid. And DNA is like the blueprint. It's like the instructions um, to give your cells for making so many different types of proteins. You know, your DNA determines your eye color, your hair color, your skin color, and it tells your body how to make pretty much anything. So there's a lot of it. So DNA is like an absolutely massive uh, recipe book. Now your cells, they're dividing quite often, a lot of them, okay? And every time your cells divide, we've got to copy all of that DNA. So when we're busy copying, copying, copying our DNA, sometimes we make mistakes, we make a little typo. And that, you know, little error in that copying of your DNA, that's a mutation. Okay, so if you think about your recipe book as our example, you know, if you make a mistake when you're copying a recipe, you know, instead of putting in a cup of sugar, you might put in a cup of salt. Not a good result quite often. Now, every time we get a change in our DNA like that, that's called a mutation. Some mutations are not really a big problem. You know, it's just a tiny little spelling mistake. But of course, some mutations do have the potential to cause us disease. So that's what a mutation is, but how does that fit into a mutated virus? Well, virus also contains DNA or it contains RNA, which is very similar to DNA. And the coronavirus that's going around at the moment, that happens to be an RNA virus. Now, the way that viruses work is that they're going to infect your body cells and then their DNA or RNA is also going to be copied as the virus um, basically multiplies inside your cell. Um, so when we're copying, 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 all of that viral DNA or RNA, sometimes there's gonna be changes in the sequence. There's gonna be a, a slight mutation. And the end result is that we're gonna have a mutated virus. So that's what a mutation is. Let's look at a variant. And why would a variant be more dangerous? So what is a variant? Well, it's an established virus with one or more mutations. So if you think about what happens when that DNA or RNA gets copied, some of it gets changed. Now, these changes or these mutations, you know, they might actually work against the virus. You know, they might make the virus weaker. They might mess it up, basically. <laughs> and that'll make the virus you know, less uh, able to survive and be transmitted. Um, so chances are that virus is going to, you know, basically just disappear and die out. Um, but of course, some of these mutations, they might actually make the virus more resilient, you know, more uh, stronger, if you like, more able to infect people, more easy to be transmitted. Um, so, you know, guess which ones end up surviving? Uh, well, you know, this is just, um, you know, survival of the fittest. Basically, um, if you get something that's mutated and that mutation works to its advantage and makes it stronger and more resilient, that's what's going to end up surviving and, of course, being replicated and spreading and transmitting uh, throughout the community. So, um, you know, these new variants that we hear about, 
why are variants more dangerous? Well, naturally, the variants that do survive, they are more likely to be more dangerous simply because, you know, it's this process of evolution. If they hadn't, you know, mutated in that way, um, then our immune systems would catch up with them or whatever. Um, you know, we'd find a way to eliminate them or eradicate them. So variants do tend to be more dangerous, more transmittable, more able to cause disease. That's just the way they evolve. So how is a variant different to a strain? What is a new strain of a virus? So a strain of a virus is a mutated version of a virus that is significantly different. Now, there are a couple of different ways we can get new strains, but we'll stick with mutations for now. Um, and a strain, again, you know, it's usually more dangerous than the original virus, um, simply through that process of evolution, you know, and its, its tendency towards survival, um, you know, as new strains develop. If they weren't stronger than the original, if they were weaker, they would die out, you know. So again, strains like variants, they tend to be more stronger, um, more dangerous, more transmittable, more able to cause disease, etc. So let's sum all up all of this. You know, what's the difference between the mutation, the variant, the strain, and so on? So if you think about it this way, you've got your original virus. It goes through one or more mutations. And assuming those mutations make it stronger and not weaker, we're going to end up with a new variant. Now, the new variant might also undergo mutations. Um, we might end up with a new strain through a different mechanism, not necessarily mutation. I won't talk about that right now. Um, but if you imagine the variant also undergoes further mutation, it may look significantly different to the original virus. And at that point, we've got a new strain. So here's an easy example um, to think about this. If you imagine that the original virus is like a motor vehicle, you know, mutations are minor changes. You paint it red, you paint it yellow. It's still the same car, yeah? Um, but if Elon Musk comes along and he comes out with this car that doesn't even need petrol or diesel, well, wow, you know, <laughs> this car is really quite different. Um, so Elon Musk's Tesla, Tesla, you know, this is a bit like a new variant. Um, it's still a car, yeah? But when you lift the hood and have a look underneath, something different's going on in there. Um, so that's kind of like a new variant. Um, but then somebody else comes along and they invent a car that doesn't, doesn't even just need petrol. It doesn't even need somebody to drive it. This thing just drives by itself. So, wow, yes, it is still a car, but it's so different that we're going to call that a new strain. So I hope that uh, analogy works for you. So what about vaccines? Where do they fit into the picture? Will vaccines work against new variants? Well, let's have a look at flu shot as an example. Um, now, the influenza virus, it undergoes, you know, this evolutionary process pretty rapidly. We come out with new strains of influenza pretty frequently. And this is why medical professionals, you know, they recommend that you get the flu shot on an annual basis, because what they're putting in that vaccine, you know, they're attempting to, um, you know, target any new potential strains of the virus. Um, so this is why even if you had flu in one year, whether you, you know, you might not have even had flu, but if you were exposed to that virus, either through natural environmental exposure, or if you acquired your immunity artificially via vaccination, um, you're not necessarily going to be immune to whatever flu virus comes around the following year, because it could be a different strain. So what about coronavirus? Well, um, already, of course, we're seeing new variants come through. Um, are today's vaccines going to be effective against whatever is happening with this virus next year? We don't know yet. Is it possible that the vaccines we see today are not going to work and that we're going to be required to have ongoing annual vaccination against coronavirus? Well, yes, that is a strong possibility, simply because this is how viruses mutate, evolve, develop new variants, develop new strains. Um, so will these vaccinations be effective? We don't know yet. Is it possible they won't be? Absolutely, it's possible. We see this with the influenza viruses already as an example. So let's just sum it up. So the uh, mutation and evolution 
of new variants and strains of viruses as nothing new, as a natural phenomenon. New variants and strains are usually more harmful to us simply because they have adapted to survive and we have not yet adapted to outwit them. Now for better or worse, we have coexisted with viruses for thousands of years and they could well be a part of our life for a few thousand more. That's it for today. If you've enjoyed today's session, please do like the video and hit subscribe because the more subscribers we have to our channel, the more we can offer. And we look forward to offering you more. Um, if you would like to check out our learning platform, I'll also put the link down below. Click on that link and you'll be taken straight through to our learning platform where you can sign in and you can access free content on a whole range of different topics. Um, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed today's session. Learn more with Switch on Health.